Splatana Stamper is the coolest looking weapon in the entire game. That's just an objective fact, sorry. And more importantly, it has a unique style of play around combos, pressure, and a quick kill time up close. I'm Chara, a Splatoon 3 competitive player who recently picked up the Splatana Stamper for top level play. And today, I want to help you learn the basics of the weapon. And if you enjoy it, you can check out my own channel for even more Splatoon content. First, I want to talk on the different fire modes it has because there's a lot to cover with this weapon. The Uncharged Slash sends out a beam at around mid range that does 35 damage. This has decent speed, paints fairly well, and the hitbox is extremely wide but only horizontally, so it's best for flat terrain. However, it's really hard to hit people on elevated surfaces. The melee version of this attack does 20 damage, but if you hit the blade and the beam, you can do 20 plus the 35 to do 55 damage in total, meaning up close, if you're accurate, it's a two shot. The second attack is the charge slash, which sends out an almost long range beam that does 70 damage. It's the opposite to the previous one where it's very easy to hit vertically, such as if you're standing under a ledge, but due to the charge time and slow travel speed is bad on flat terrain, especially against fast weapons. It can still put up good pressure though, as getting hit by a 70 damage attack across the map is still pretty threatening. Up close though, this can be a one shot that does require some precise aim, and if you hold forward while you do it, you can do a dash slightly, which will make it a little bit slower, but allow you to have a little bit more range. Lastly, before I get into the basics, is your burst bomb. This sub weapon is only 40% of your ink tank with solid range and can do 25, 35, or 60 damage depending on how close you hit your burst bomb. This can also paint over enemies and can be used for your own movement, specifically painting walls. This sub is very cheap and can be used often to tie into the weapon's combos. So let's talk about those. Your bread and butter combo is a charge slash into a horizontal slash. Because of the speed of the slashes, you can basically hit them both at around the same time, which is a very quick kill option, especially on flatter terrain where it's easier to hit. Similarly, if you use the burst bomb, you can use that before or after a charge slash to get a nice quick kill that can reach a little bit further at the cost of more of your ink tank. Finally, up close, you can use burst bombs to both help your mobility and weaken them to use up close uncharged slashes, which can be really useful in the right situations. Most of the time, your kills are going to come from combining the two modes of fire or one of those modes of fire and the sub open, so don't get too stuck using only one of them. Try to use a lot of them together to get those picks. I'll also add here that jumping and squid rolling can be used for an easier time hitting charge slashes up close. Generally, this weapon is a great helper for fast, aggressive weapons like shooters or duallys, or area of effect weapons like blasters, sloshers, and any burst bomb weapons like splash. You can safely poke longer and mid-range enemies and threaten them easily, which your shorter range weapons can capitalize on. And if you need to, you still have pretty solid fighting power on your own, especially for punishing slower weapons or things like the end lag of a tetra dodge roll. It's also worth noting that you do great damage to objects with your charge slash, which means you can pressure things like splash wall or big bubbler safely at a distance. I also find this weapon is great to play under ledges, where the charge slash can poke safely while it protects you, and if they get up close, you can use your one shot. So that covers this weapon. Thanks so much to Squidman for- Okay, fine, we'll talk about the weird part of the kit. So this thing has a zip caster. This special is incredibly awkward for this weapon. It has no fast ways of killing, as even charge slash gives time for the opponents to react, and at mid-range you have to hit multiple shots. And it also, of course, takes away your burst bomb, which really helps out with your mobility. I find the best uses for it are mid-range targeting slower weapons that can struggle to evade you, and you can potentially combo the zip cast itself, which can do damage when it travels through or explodes near someone. Regardless though, this special is a small margin for error, so worst case, try to grab some attention and get out alive. That's all the basics for the Splatana Stamper. It is a steep learning curve, but it's super fun once you get past it. Thanks so much to Squidman for inviting me again, and check out my channel for more Stamper gameplay.